Okay, so let me get started. Um, so these uh, set of four questions, they relate to uh, rotational kinematics. A lot of them, uh, you can do them by applying definitions or analogy to linear motion. Um, and uh, so they are relatively quick and easy to do once you uh, have your sense around the relationship uh, between these quantities basically so when we are doing linear kinematics we had the position velocity and acceleration as a function of time and there was a way these were related to each other time derivative and there's going to be um, analogous quantities in rotation there's an angular position there's angular velocity and there's angular acceleration as a function of time and between each other, they are related the same way these were, but through derivatives and integrals with respect to time. And uh, depending on the setup, you may need to be able to relate um, the tangential quantities of linear motion with the angular quantities. And the way you do it, it's uh, quite simple. Once you um, wrap your head around the, the definition of radian, once you have these angles all expressed in radian units, then the linear position along the arc, arc length or circle um, that your angle is changing over is simply radius times the angle. And this relationship carries through. The tangential velocity is radius times angular velocity. Tangential acceleration, not to be confused with the centripetal acceleration, is radius times angular acceleration. Um, these are the kind of relationships that it can take a while to get to learn them first, but once you learn them and get comfortable, then it's a, a surprisingly few number of things to remember. So here, it says a track star runs uh, this long of a race on a circular track, okay, weird, in 50 seconds. Ah. So it's asking what is this angular velocity assuming a constant speed. So it looks like we are given enough information to calculate is average speed or is a speed, assuming constant speed. Is average is tangential speed is the distance, 350 meters per time, 50 seconds. So I'll get its average at constant speed. And from that, through this relationship here, I can work it back to the angular velocity. So um, let me uh, do the calculation in sage math. So his average speed is 350 divided by 50 meters per second. And um, just staring at this expression for a while to get omega, I need to divide by R. Um, it says 350 meter circular track. Um, there's a bit of an ambiguity. I'm going to assume this might be the the that might be the uh, the radius of the circular track. Uh, if it's some circumference, then we'll come back and rework it up. Assuming it's radius, then I take the speed divided by the radius, 350 meters. Then unit-wise, what you will see is one over second. And uh, that one is a Radian is not a real unit. It, 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 we write it whenever we want to make sure that we understand the unitless quantity we see as an angular quantity. So one over second, radians per second. There are contexts where you have to be careful, but most of the time you can just freely swap them back and forth. So let me try 0 0.02. If it says it's wrong, <laughs> then I'm going to go with the other interpretation where uh, where, where 350 meters is the circumference. All right, in the case, I gotta do a little more work. I need to first to write out what is the expression for radius. So radius would be the circumference divided by two times uh, pi. I'm just gonna do numerical approximation. Uh, or, or the decimal approximation. <laughs> Otherwise, this thing will try to keep pi throughout all the expressions. Um, so once I have the radius, I do the same thing. Speed divided by the radius. So 0 0.126.
probably could have used a, a bit of a clarification, but I, I think it's fine. You know, you have been, well, 100 tries, so I think it'll be fine. Okay, let me do the next question. i am gonna do a, be a little bit faster. So, next question says, a particle moves five meters along a circle. Let me just uh, erase some of the older ones. Along a circle of radius two meters. Let me just uh, sketch it out just so that I uh, have <laughs> correct understanding of this. So we are looking at a circle of uh, two meter radius. Five meters, that doesn't sound like a circumference. So it's uh, what it's saying is it's moving a portion of that circle, which is five meters. Okay, yeah, and it's asking through what angle does it rotate? We look at this expression here that relates the uh, distance along the circumference with the angular displacement. So I take the distance divided by the radius. That's uh, 2.5. And it's a ratio of length, so technically it's a unitless quantity. And uh, and again, radian is not a real unit. Whenever it's convenient, you uh, switch between unitless number to radian. It's uh, gotta keep track to not get confused in tricky situations though. Okay. If the particle makes this trip in one second at a constant speed, what, okay, I already have angular displacement. So that divided by one second should be the answer. And dividing by one, so same number. What is the magnitude of its acceleration? Okay. Um, it's, as it posted this, uh, um, this uh, statement, so I have to think of its acceleration in two components. So imagine a particle moving this way. Uh, and I think, at least I think that's the intent of the question. If I'm imagining particle moving this way, so it's going to have tangential component of acceleration, and it may have radial component of acceleration. And the tangential part will be zero if uh, this statement is still right. The particle is making this trip at a constant speed. Then the tangential acceleration will be zero because this is zero. Radial acceleration, this is the good old familiar centripetal acceleration. So I think what the question is asking for is basically what is the centripetal acceleration because the tangential component is zero. So, all right, I gotta remember then the formula AR is equal to V squared over R, or in this case, since I already have omega, let me rewrite this uh, in terms of omega. I just substitute this in to get uh, R omega squared. I think that's correct algebra. So I can take this, square it, and multiply by R, which is two. Oh, can I do that in my head? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, let me try it, and if I, uh, make a, uh, I don't know, I don't think that's good. You know, let, let me just do it in a calculator. <laughs> Not confident enough. Okay, omega squared, 2.5 squared, divided by the, uh, multiplied by the radius. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't gonna be right, so okay. Good, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing the 25 squared wrong in my head. So, anyways, yeah. So that's what it's asking for. I think this is somewhat tricky. I can imagine people answering zero because of this. And then you have to remember, oh, there's the perpendicular component that might not be zero. Okay, uh, question 1-5. Um, oh, so this is 3, 4, 5, this one. Okay, it says um, vertical wheel with some diameter. Oh, I think I can reuse much of this drawing. Let me just, uh, so uh, it has diameter of 50 centimeters or 0 0.5 meter of diameter. Oh wait, that's radius. So the radius uh, from the given number will be uh, 0 0.25 meter. I'll just convert it to radius because radius is more useful in formulas than diameter. Uh, it says it rotates with a constant angular acceleration 
Okay, so we are given this quantity to start this time, angular acceleration around the fixed axis through its center counterclockwise. Okay. Uh, where is the point that is initially at the bottom of the wheel? At t equals 14 seconds. Ah, okay. So I have to um, I have to work through kinematic. So this is um, um, this question wording. It if it reminds you of the constant acceleration kinematics you've done in chapter three. That's great. That's exactly what we are gonna do. So let me write down the the analogous versions of these equations. So if this is a constant then what we can say for omega and theta r, omega final is equal to omega initial plus angular acceleration times delta t. And what we can say for angular position is theta final is equal to initial angular position plus initial angular velocity times delta t and plus, this comes from doing the calculus integration. You can review chapter three if you need to one half angular acceleration times delta t squared. So since they are asking us for angular position, let's just, uh, just to just write that out. Um, we are given all the quantities. I think I said it's starting from rest. So this is zero. And I guess we'll just say that this location here at the bottom of the wheel, that this is theta is equal to zero, and we'll kind of work its way through that uh, uh, relative. All right. Um, you know, uh, let, let me do it properly, uh, um, formally, because the question is wanting me to use this uh, orientation as zero. So they want me to say this is zero degrees uh, or zero radius, because it says. Uh, radians between 0 to 5 relative to the positive x-axis, plus x. I think that's what they mean for me to use. So that's the usual definition of x-axis. So I would have to use initial angle is minus pi over 2. And then it'll uh, start increasing. Counterclockwise is the usual way we define positive angle. So I think that's good. OK, so let me uh, write this out. So theta final is my initial. I'm just going to do. Um, Oh, you know what? I guess let me retain pi for now. So my initial, um, eh, you know, I'm not going to retain pi, sorry. I'm going back and forth. So my initial angle is minus pi over 2 plus 0 for the starting from rest. And this is the um, term for the uh, contribution of acceleration. 0.5 or one half times the acceleration, 4.5 radians per second squared times now the time squared, uh, 14 squared. Okay. So when I work this out, I get on number, <laughs> um, which is not between zero and two pi, because um, let me just put this answer into theta final. Um, so two pi is this, so let me just uh, uh, multiply this by, I don't know. I'm just doing it by trial and error. There's, I'm sure, smarter way to do it, but um, I, this is kind of quicker. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of the reason. Okay, okay, I think. So n times 70 was bigger. So n times 69 is now smaller. Okay, so I'm gonna take my final angle and subtract of uh, the 2 pi times 69. That'll give me a number that's between 0 and 2 pi. So that's a 5.89, 5.89 radians. And what is the point tangential acceleration at this time? Oh, that's uh, easy. We were given the angular acceleration that gives us tangential acceleration directly, and it's a constant value, so we don't have to, uh, oh, oh yeah, we don't need to do the radius. So it's going to be 4.5 times 0 0.25 to give me the acceleration in meter per second squared. 
So 4.5 times 0 0.25, 1.128. So, yep, that's it. Um, oh, didn't even look at the hint. What does the hint say? Um, yeah, that, that's what we are using for Part B. Um, okay, so I think there's one more question. Uh, so I guess all these questions, it's taken a little bit longer than I would like, but you know, uh, we're, we're here and we're <laughs> gonna finish this up. Um, and so, what the rotational kinematics questions will do for you or do to you is it'll uh, make sure you your understanding of translational kinematics was solid because you are basically doing the same thing but in different context so if you're just uh, you know doing it by rote memorization then you will struggle here <laughs> uh, to the extent that you understood those by heart um, you'll do better here and the, uh, the, that's, uh, I think, what's uh, useful about these rotational questions. They make sure that you understood the translational mechanics well, not just to memorize, didn't just memorize some uh, road steps. So, okay, it says, uh, rod of some length has two bits. Okay, let me just sketch it out. I got some rod uh, with some length given. That's got two beads attached to the ends. The rod with the beads starts rotating from rest. Okay. If the beads are to have a tangent. Okay, so I'm going to make a reasonable assumption that the rod is rotating about its center and the tangential speed of beads are the same, uh, which would be the case if it's rotating about its center. So tangential speed of 20 meters per second in seven seconds. Okay, so um, it sounds like they've given us enough information to work out the, the acceleration because they've given us change in speed. So, you know, from way back in chapter three, acceleration, average acceleration or constant acceleration is change in speed per duration of time. It's going from zero to 20 in seven seconds. So that's going to give us um, the, the linear acceleration. They are looking for angular acceleration. So we use this relationship to work backward to angular acceleration. So my acceleration the linear acceleration is 20 divided by 7. And my angular acceleration will be this divided by the radius. So the this length, that's the diameter. So I have to divide that by 2. Um, so it will be linear acceleration divided by the, the length of the rod, 0 0.18 meter divided by 2. That's the radius. And that should give us the angular acceleration. Now, there are other ways to do this so you know you could have first uh, work backward so it's a so i guess what it comes down to is you are starting from here you want to end up here i took this path uh, i went down here and then here you could also take this path uh, you can work out the change in the angular velocity first and then from that use the angular acceleration use change of angular velocity per time this is the analogous relationship to this one. Uh, so two different ways you can do it. Both should give you the same answer. So, so those are all the uh, rotational kinematics questions. Um, let me look at the time and see. Um, 